I have so much white privilege. By now, I am convinced that privilege is a pretty outdated topic. It feels like I'm beating a dead horse, but my boy Kenny here is just asking for it. I wasn't gonna make this video. You know the video is going to be very dramatic when someone in the intro says that sentence. But please, do go on. But the comment section for the Why I Left BuzzFeed video turned into a cesspool of some of the worst people spouting just hateful and ignorant things, so I'm gonna fucking rant for a bit. Well, I did briefly skim through your previous video. I thought that your reasoning was pretty okay given the fact that for one, you confirmed some of the doubts people had, such as BuzzFeed's need for quantity over quality. However, did you at least stop and think why people said those things in the first place? And because it's important to cite your sources, I included links in the description box to all the stuff that I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, the sources. They're shit. People hurled a lot of hate at BuzzFeed in the comments. They called it feminist and racist. I didn't really feel the need to defend BuzzFeed, but I started to take these comments personally, and the louder these people got, the louder I realized I need to be. So you got upset that people acted like assholes on the internet? Look, I've been there. Online roasting is tough, but wasting your time and breath on trolls is beneath anyone who has a shred of what is commonly known as common sense. So first up, let's talk about people accusing BuzzFeed of being feminist. Now, I wouldn't disagree with that. For the sake of the video, I'm going to use this pretty simple definition of feminism. Feminist, a person who believes in the social, political, and economic equality of the sexes. Oh, so flashy. I'm glad I do not suffer from epilepsy. And oh look, yet another moron who thinks the textbook definition of feminism will somehow magically make his argument better. You might be asking yourself, wait a second Kenny, I don't understand. A lot of my friends are women, of course I want them to be treated the same way that I'm treated. It does seem a little bit confusing, right? That doesn't seem like too offensive of a concept, so what's the problem? But ask yourself this, do you treat women differently in your daily life? Do you say the same things the same way with all the notions to women and men? I'm relatively sure you already treat women nicely and there is no need to put in any more additional effort. And the problem is that for some women, that is not enough. They project their insecurities onto you. And how is that fair? And trust me, I don't need a middle-aged fat cow spreading information aids and speaking for me without any need. One is that people don't believe that women are treated differently. And I guess the other is that people are accusing BuzzFeed of hating men. And I got a lot of that in the comments. In Western society, women are treated better than men. It is slowly becoming very apparent. The statement that BuzzFeed is hating men is very strong, but given how they consistently avoid talking about men's issues is pretty obvious as well, and they don't seem to care about that. First of all, I don't know how we can keep arguing about whether women are treated differently. Women are paid less. Women are underrepresented in a lot of fields. When women are raped, they're told they either deserve it because of what they're wearing or for being too drunk or because of their behavior. These women made a conscious choice, as the judge pointed out in her decision, to wear certain clothes that day and some of their body parts were in the public domain. In a recent radio interview, Dr. Steven Trattenberg said that women should simply drink less alcohol if they don't want to be raped. Or they're just not believed at all and are claimed to be lying for attention, I guess, or revenge? Why would a woman lie about being raped knowing that there's going to be people coming for her, giving her death threats, coming forward knowing that you're going to be viciously attacked takes a shit ton of courage and you wouldn't do that if you're lying. That doesn't, that literally makes no sense. Okay, so I see a lot of feminist propaganda in this one damn minute. Yes, you definitely have been working for BuzzFeed. So let's start from the top. The wage gap is a myth because it is the difference among all the jobs men and women do without taking into consideration variables such as level of risk and responsibility, as well as education, qualification, personal preferences, and many more. And just in case you didn't understand me, I'll simplify. Imagine all the jobs men do and put them in a pot. Do the same for women and all the jobs they do. Now draw an average from both of those categories and you will have your wage gap. Next, underrepresentation. In this sense, there is more demand than supply. If women do not want to work on oil rigs or be sailors or commercial pilots that often, 
leave them the fuck alone. Similarly, if a guy wants to be a nursery teacher or hairstylist, makeup artist, social worker, whatever, let them be that. When did personal choice and preferences become irrelevant? Those women who bitch and moan about other women not being enough in science are either idiots or they have been incredibly misunderstood and they haven't just figured this out because they are dumb. The judgment of actual rape victims is nasty, I agree. But at the same time, it holds some truth in it. People urge women to take more care for themselves because you will never know what people are actually like. Predators lurk everywhere and all they need is for you to have a moment of weakness. What some women ask is a complete 180 degree in people's behavior. That will not happen because this kind of judgment and similar judgment in different fields is inevitably prevalent. If you break your arm, some will pity you, others will ask you why you were so careless. Especially if you broke your arm in a very dumb way. If you remember the plague that was planking, all fun and games until someone died. There were plenty of those who called the victim idiot and shamed that person. Now the cherry, false rape claims. These are real and even a nastier thing than being judged of the clothing that you wear. You know why? Because those who actually get raped and come forward will be judged even more. They will have to endure questioning and skepticism. How can you trust people if they lie? How can you differentiate between a liar and one who tells the truth? It's incredibly difficult. Needless to say that those cunts who actually lie do it for personal gain. These women are incredibly selfish and careless. Do you really think they care about other women? In any other given case, they might even victim blame the rape victim saying the same things you complained about. Then there's objectification in the media, women being treated like sex objects. Also, women are shamed for being sexual beings while men are glorified. And people will say that you can't complain about being objectified while also wanting to own your own sexuality. In what world? There's a difference between owning your own sexuality and being objectified by other people without your consent. There's so much more that I could say here, but I don't have time. And uh, there's a lot of really talented women on the internet writing about this who are doing a much better job than I am. So you should go look them up. I put some names in the description box. The basic objective of an advertisement is that it should catch attention of a potential buyer and then persuade them to buy the product. That is it. Given that men are stereotypically more psyched about sex and women in general, it's no wonder that advertisers will use that soft spot. The ad almost never will portray real life, it's fiction. Main point is to instill a certain type of emotion, make people do something they haven't thought about, plant a new idea if you will. This is common sense. Also, men are objectified in the media as well. Every other ad with men is them being overly masculine and shredded. A lot of times you'll find ads where the guy is naked and his dick is replaced with the product the company's trying to sell. You mean to tell me that's not objectification? Also, I cannot even grasp why owning one's sexuality often equals wearing less clothes. Why some women suddenly need to put their boobs out when they come to terms of being a woman or whatever the fuck they do. You don't often hear women admitting that they just like clothing that would stereotypically fit a prostitute. No, no. There has to be a socially accepted excuse. Today it's owning sexuality, tomorrow it's going to be something else. And it's funny how you assume men have it easier as if men do all the slut shaming. <laughs> Prick. The second argument against BuzzFeed is that they're racist against white people. Y'all. BuzzFeed is white, first and foremost. Most of the people that I worked with were white. Where it gets sort of complicated is the fact that BuzzFeed doesn't really have editorial oversight. So they don't have someone who's saying, hey, there's been a lot of videos recently shitting on white people. Maybe we should tone it down a bit. I guess BuzzFeed's viewer opinions do not matter. When a shit ton of people complain that BuzzFeed is acting like a white knight, it should be used as a signifier that your former employer is doing something wrong. Excuse denied. So when you do have people of color making videos about topics that are related to them, white people are gonna come up a lot because white people have done a lot of shit. Slavery, Trail of Tears, Japanese internment camps. How about denying women's rights? Who's targeting Muslim Americans as terrorists? White people. Who is burning neighborhoods and encouraging cop killing? Black Lives Matter. What kind of people blow up themselves in the name of religion? 
fundamental Islamists. In which parts of the world is perfectly acceptable to honor kill? Middle Eastern countries. Secondly, you cannot be racist against white people. Here's why. So the Oxford Dictionary defines racism as prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. So yes, prejudice and discrimination can be directed at all races, including white people, but racism is a different thing because of that last part about superior. Racism can be broadly defined to encompass individual and group prejudices and acts of discrimination that result in material and cultural advantages conferred on a majority or dominant social group. Who has been the dominating and subduing force since, like, ever? So you pull out a textbook definition and then decide to cherry pick the word superior? You literally say, this is the definition of racism, but racism is different from this all-inclusive definition because there is false assumption that white people purposely hoard all the power. Stop eating shit, Kenny. And no, dominant social groups vary in every region. I'd like to see you bestow your white privilege in Africa or India, perhaps Korea or Brazil, maybe Mexico. Even a hood in LA will have parts where dominant social group is anything but white. And finally, the old you can be racist towards white people. Yes, you can, because if the only crime you've ever committed is that your skin is white, then that is racism. Here's some examples. You might have heard about these North Carolina voting laws that have been in the media lately. Well. That kind of sounds familiar. In the 1960s, we tried to stop black people from voting in a variety of ways, but one was by enacting a poll tax that not a lot of people could afford, and second, by subjecting everyone to a literacy test. Well, back then, a lot of black people couldn't read, which is a failure of the education system in the United States as far as I'm concerned. I took a look at those North Carolina laws, and if I am correct, then all the fuss is that now people will have to prove their identity even when voting? Is that all? How is this a sign of racism? I mean, why can't you just use your goddamn fucking passport as ID proof? Why couldn't people ask for the damned IDs to be free of charge? I'm sure it has pretty good use afterwards as well. And your examples of past racism are fine and dandy, but let me ask you this. How much of this still exists today, in actuality? Also, the educational system is responsible for educating the youngsters, not parenting them. Also, minorities are more likely to be criminalized for drugs, and minorities Minorities are more likely to be targeted by the police. It just so happens that minorities do most of the crimes, cause most of the trouble, and tend to disobey the law and shoot the cops, even more so. These sort of people within the minority groups tarnish reputation for the rest of the people in those groups, who actually mean no harm. So you cannot be racist against white people because white people have been at the top of the racial food chain since forever, and being at the top gives you privilege. White people are privileged. I have so much white privilege. Kenny, meth is bad. Please stop using drugs. I've never been the only white person anywhere. I feel welcome and comfortable pretty much everywhere I go. I've never feared for my life in an interaction with a police officer. Also, the media not only represents my race pretty much everywhere all the time, but there is also a very clear bias, and you can see that here in the Olympics. Ryan Lochte lied about being robbed at gunpoint when instead he and his friends broke the door of a gas station and peed everywhere and got into an altercation with a security guard. The spokesman for Rio 2016 said, give these kids a break. On the other hand, Gabby Douglas didn't put her hand on her heart for the national anthem and everyone in this country lost their damn minds. Public response to Lochte has been lighthearted and humorous while response to Gabby Douglas has been angry and critical. All your so-called privileges exist only in the country you reside. Go somewhere more hostile and watch your stupid white privilege disintegrate into thin fucking air. The Lochte incident? Oh god. You know that if he was black, no one would even dare to roast him the way media did. He is an asshat who is not an elected representative of white people everywhere. Or anywhere for that matter. Your other example is not even related to the Lochte case. You see, Gabby didn't get drunk and pee everywhere and then lie about the whole situation. She just didn't put her hand over her heart and title pricks got upset. Oh my god. Stop being a racist 
fuck. For more examples about white privilege, you can check out the article Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack by Peggy McIntosh. It's a great article. You can find the link in the description. Now, we have a chance to be better. We have a chance to treat people with more fairness and respect and equality. Acknowledging your own privilege does not mean taking responsibility for the actions of others. It literally only means acknowledging that you were born with an advantage that others do not have. Okay, okay. Stop, stop, stop. Peggy probably was high when she wrote that fucking stupid list. I discourage anyone ever wanting to read that thing unless you want to have a nice laugh. All that privilege shit usually falls flat when circumstances are not the same. They're always similar, but they're never the same. Very rarely. And when they are the same circumstances, then you can call privilege. But in most cases, it's just going to be similar circumstances or not even related circumstances. You know, there's a saying that actions prove who someone is, words just prove who they want to be. The saying perfectly matches and fits SJW crap, Black Lives Matter crap, because they will pull out the textbook definition of things and then they will say, we're about equality, we're about this and that, and then they go down, burn things, and then they abuse people online and in real life, and then they wash themselves clean into whatever morality that they have. It's pathetic. You know, too much privilege checking causes brain cancer. Overall, you have no idea what you're talking about. You read information that is biased and supports your internal narrative, which is in itself borrowed from god knows where you didn't even discuss the claims about buzzfeed hating men and this is so typical from idiots like you you just pretend that it was never mentioned because you do not even know how to dispute those claims and in the end you pretty much contradict yourself you say that it's not about shaming people it's not about feeling guilty it's all about understanding uh, where you come from that you have privileges but your video the whole video was about how white people in the past and supposedly in the present are fucking things up for minority groups. Do you see where I'm going with this? Kenny, you are wrong and I seriously hope you will stop checking your privilege. I don't know, awkward ending. See ya.